Hey everybody, it's Mountain Mike. Back again out on the mountain. Thanks for joining me. Checking in see what's going on on our next video on the Norwood Sawmill Assembly. So today we're going to start out with the emergency stop switch installation and the wire connections to it. And then we're going to proceed from there. Okay, so the first thing it says to do is get into bag 13A. It does not tell you it's in box 15A. And this will be the first time we get in box 15A. So here's the contents of it. And we're going to get into 13A and get the emergency switch out. Here's the contents of bag 13A. And we're going to go ahead and get this emergency stop switch assembled. Okay, so the next step be to take your emergency switch. It's got this brown switch on it. We're going to flip that to the side and disconnect it. Take your switch and it's got a what they call a retaining sleeve on it. Keeping in mind you have locking tabs in the switch so you'll be installing the wiring harness next on it and the orientation do matter. So my suggestion is is to take and put the switch on just finger tight put your switch on there take it back off tighten down then putting the switch back on locking it in place with the brown button. Next step Okay, the next step is to install the push handle. That's out of box 14. Okay, so I wanted to point out that the uh, carriage bolts and nuts were already installed in this part. They did not specify a bag for these to come out of, and it took me a minute to realize they were already there. Let's put it on. So I wanted to point out real quick, that we just put the switch installation and the wiring harness back together and then they tell us to put these nuts and bolts in there and yet this wiring harness is in the way in true Norwood instructional fashion they have their steps out of order this one needs to go first then do your installation on the switch that way your wiring harness and everything is not hindering you and you don't accidentally bust your switch Moving on. So the next step is to mount this water lube tank. And we're going to need this bag 12. They don't tell you to put the cap on it, but it's in bag 10. We're going to go ahead and put the cap on it to keep junk from flying into it. So let's go ahead and get that mounted. So I want y'all to see this. So here's the contents of bag 12. And the next step is to install your tank, tighten it down, and then you want to install the on-off valve. Well, other than breaking it off on the installation, I don't know why in the world you would do that except for in opposite. So here's the goofy thing. They tell you install. And the exploded view only shows you the valve. It does not go in there. It does not fit here. Obviously, it's not going to. They provided a bung. I'm guessing this is what you're supposed to use, but it doesn't fit in the hole. And then you have this hole here. Uh, it's not all the way through. And the bung is extremely loose in it. So really not sure what they want you to do here so i'm going to go ahead and mount the tank just loosely and and probably have to end up pulling it off to figure out what the hay but right now I, I, we need to get this assembled we got a storm rolling in tonight and i want to get this thing as far along as possible that way i can just throw a tarp right over this thing to protect it through the storm and uh, not have to worry about all these extra pieces and components laying everywhere so let's get to it and don't worry about that right now all right so the next step is going to be installing the winch shaft covers left and right at uh, box 14 we're going to finish bag three off with the remaining bolts now my pack they gave me three of the right ones and one of the wrong ones this one has the the cutting edge on it i don't know Hopefully that doesn't inhibit us. So we're going to go ahead and install those. So now we have the winch shaft guards in place and you should be looking like this. Got the tank on top. 
Now I did go ahead and tighten down the tank because the shaft guard covered one of the bolt holes that was there in front there. So next we have bag 8 and box 14 with the blade tension assembly. And we're going to get in bag 8 and see what's in there. Let's do that. Alrighty. Here's bag 8 contents. Now let's start assembling this thing. Alright, so the first thing we got to do is uh, take this 3.5 inch bolt here. It's got some black tape on it. And we're going to apply grease to the threads. So now that you have your bolt greased, so we're going to take the blade tension assembly and insert the bolt. So once you got your bolt greased and inserted, go ahead and drive it up to your black tape. Greasing this bolt's extremely important in maintaining your mill. So you want to keep an eye on this and it well greased. They also tell you the upper side and lower side of the blade tension assembly both need greasing as well. Now you got it all greased up, let's insert it into the saw head plate. It should look about like that with your two holes lining up with these two adjustment slots. Alright, so once you get the blade tension assembly greased up and installed, then the next step will involve these parts right here. Now everything came out of bag 8 except for the pin and the shoulder bolt. So they're telling me the shoulder bolt should be in bag 5. I've already finished that off, but I remember it in bag 7. The shoulder bolt and the pin came out of bag 7, the two cotter pins. Everything else came out of bag 8, and the T-handle came out of box 14. So let's go ahead and get these installed. So the first thing you want to do is take your pin and install it into the front slot using your cotter pin to secure. And we'll do that in a moment. So the next thing is to install the blade tension adjuster plate. Again, securing with a cotter pin. Next we'll install the shoulder bolt. So once you get the shoulder bolt installed, back in bag number seven for the nylon nut. Okay, so the next order of things, they say to install the spacers, the blade tension spring, the washer, then the end plate cover, and then grease your screw. And then after that, your T-handle. Oh, that's fine and dandy. It just makes sense to me that uh, you go ahead and put your end plate in, grease your screw, then apply your parts. That's how I'm gonna do it. So let's assemble this. So back in bag number seven for the carriage bolts and nuts to install the end plate. Because they have a square slot, we know the bolts go down. Fine grease. Again, with this being a frequent greasing point, so you need to keep grease on this. So apparently a little grease on these threads aren't enough. They want you to grease these too. So apparently this is something that you really need to keep an eye on with some grease. Okay, so we're at the opposite end of the saw head plate. Now to bag eight again, We've got these two parts, and this is the fan head tracking adjuster. We're gonna go ahead and insert that into this slot. Lock it in place with the cotter pin. We need to apply grease to the threads to this bolt. Again, keeping this bolt lubricated consistently, and we're going to install it into the side of the band head tracking adjuster plate. So this will be the third time I've had to use this tap. Good thing they supplied that. I don't know if you can see that. Quite a few metal shavings come out of that, so it definitely needed to clean up. So now we put the band head tracking adjuster plate into its slot and the bolt up to its black tape and then installing the cotter pin. Okay, so the next step, again with confusion, they say box four. This part is in box 14 and they say bag five and again it's bag seven so be aware so the end plate we're going to go ahead and install the saw head end cover let's go ahead and do that all right so the next step is to install the depth of cut lumber scale now 
I'm pretty sure Nora's just giving up at this point. They're, they're telling me box 7. And it was not box 7, it was box 11. But we're figuring this out regardless of Norwood's help. Thank you, Norwood. Now, the next step is to uninstall these two bolts. As you can see, we're on the operator side with the winch crank right here. And we're going to remove these two bolts and install this back on there with those two bolts. So let's get that done. So I wanted to show that when you start installing this uh, lumber scale that the back side of it, it's, it's, they don't leave you much room here. So I'm using a wobble socket. Okay, so today we've covered emergency stop installation and wire connection to switch, push handle installation, and installation of depth of cut scale. For the next section, we move on to section D, engine installation and band wheel assembly. All right, all right, all right. So at the end of the day, you ask yourself what you got. All right, so we definitely got quite a bit done today. Next step is the engine and all the good stuff from there. It wasn't too complicated. I think the most complicated and annoying part of this whole process is the lack of good directions. Not that they're terrible. I'm a very detailed person and I would just like very detailed directions. Not that I haven't figured it out from here because I have. It definitely slows down the process when you have to scratch your head and wonder what they meant by bag four when they meant bag 14. A little proofreading on their part would have done a whole lot to ease your process. So one of my big complaints right now is definitely that. So I don't really understand why it seems to be so acceptable in directions to make them so incomplete. If the company would take the time to care about you and what you have to go through. So you got to wonder, you know, when a company doesn't want to put out the financial resources to give you a quality product all the way through to the end. Such a complicated process ought not be held up because they misprinted what bag a bolt is in or what box it was in or a box that didn't even exist because they misprinted it. We really should take the time in today's society to slow down enough to care about the small details. So this is an extremely detailed project that's not for the light of heart. So it's not something that just anybody can't do. It's just, it's a major project. So this process ought to be made as smooth as possible by the company. You wanna put your time and effort into supporting a company with the amount of money it takes to buy something like this and the amount of time that you invest into building something like this. When you buy a product like this, you really want to be able to not worry about the details. I, I've, I've worried all throughout this, whether all my parts are here or whatever. Easing the confusion in the directions would help solve a lot of issues and slowing of the process. You want to make this process as easy and as fast as possible when you're doing this and having try, trying to figure out what Norwood meant by this or that doesn't speed up the process. Worrying about it should have been in this bag when it, oh, well, when you go forward, it's in this bag. Well, maybe you didn't go forward. Maybe you contacted Norwood and caused them to have to send you bolts that you already had because they misprinted. It just, it's all very messy. This bag over here and this bag over there and it all has to do with this manufacturer makes these parts and this manufacturer makes these parts and we're just going to put them together even though they intermingle. And it gets very confusing. It, it, soupy would be a good way to put it. It's not something that you can't work out or get through, but you better pay attention to what you're doing. You better not spill your bags. You better not mix your boxes. You better pay attention to what you're doing. So that'll about wrap it up for this section of the Norwood assembly. Next is the engine install. I can't wait to get this done. It, it's really going forward. I, I feel like we're, we're really looking like something now. So this is really exciting. Make sure you stay tuned for my next videos in the series. Make sure you watch them all 
and if you're really interested in the detail of it, make sure you don't fast forward. There's a lot of detail there. So I'm Mountain Mike, out on the mountain. Until next time.